Hello and welcome to another episode of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Southern. This is part one of the video on hypothesis tests using the normal distribution uh, and in this first video I'm going to be doing a little bit of theory uh, and then an example of how to do a hypothesis test uh, using a sample taken from a normal distribution. Uh, so here we go then. Uh, the, when we're doing hypothesis tests on the normal distribution, um, it is all about taking a sample. Um, we're going to be taking samples from a population that is normally distributed um, and working with that. So uh, starting off with some uh, data here that I've got some samples that I've done um, from um, the Edexcel large data set. Now what I've done is I've asked for uh, samples of size five. So I've got five values and for each of these I've worked out the sample mean. Um, and it's the sample mean that we're interested in uh, because what would happen is if we did lots and lots of these samples, then the mean, if we took the mean of all these samples, so for example, taking the mean of these 10 numbers in bold here, then that mean would be quite close to the mean of the normal distribution. However, if we were looking at all these values here in bold, all these sample means, the variance between them would not be as great as the variance of the whole population from which the samples were taken. So in fact, if we were to say that we had a normal distribution to start with, so I'm just going to draw out a, a normal distribution curve like this uh, with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, we could say for this one that x is following the normal mean sigma squared where sigma squared is the variance. Now if we were to plot all these sample means into a normal distribution what we would find is that the mean of all those sample means would be the same as the mean of the population but the distribution that um, would be significantly squashed so it would look like this. So it wouldn't have as much variance in our um, all these sample means. And what would then happen is we could say that the distribution of the sample means follows a normal distribution. It has the same mean as the population, but the variance of these sample means uh, is inversely proportional to the size of the sample. So we say that it's following a variance of sigma squared over n. So in this case here, if I was using this data, uh, because I've taken samples of size five, um, n would be five, and the expected variance of the sample means would be one fifth of the variance of the whole population. Uh, so that's a little bit of input about where this theory kind of comes from, but the main thing that you've got to be able to do is use this format here for a sample mean to be able to do a hypothesis test uh, on a normal distribution. So let's move on to um, an actual example then. Um, this uh, example is taken from the uh, Pearson Edexcel Year 2 Pure Textbook. Uh, so thanks to them for that. Uh, and here we go. So we have a certain company sells fruit juice in cartons. Uh, the amount of juice in a carton has a normal distribution with a standard deviation of three. So I'm just going to go straight ahead and just jot that down straight away that the standard deviation is three. Now the company claims that the mean amount of juice per carton mu is 60 mils. So the company is claiming that they have a population X which is following a normal distribution with a mean of 60 and a variance of three squared. Now this is really important here is the standard deviation is three and what we write here is three squared and it's really important you do that so you don't make a mistake in the next step. Now a trading inspector has received complaints that the company is overstating the mean amount of juice per carton and he wishes to investigate this complaint. Uh, the trading inspector takes a random sample of 16 cartons and finds that the mean amount of juice per carton is 59.1. Uh, so the information that I'm getting from this is that they've taken a sample size of size 16, so n um, is equal to 16. Um, and there's debate about when you should write this, but I'm going to go right ahead now and say that um, the distribution that I'm going to be using for my hypothesis test is X bar follows the normal with a mean of 60 and a variance of three squared over 16. And I'm just going to write here 
that my variance, this is of my samples, is 9 over 16, which means that the standard deviation for my sample distribution is going to be 3 over 4, and that's the standard deviation that I'm going to be using when I calculate a probability later on. Now, we found that the mean amount of juice per carton is 59.1, uh, and the suggestion is that the company is overstating um, the mean amount of juice. Now, I'm going to use that to come up with an, a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Now, my null hypothesis here, because we're testing the mean of the normal distribution, is that the mean is 60, as claimed by the company. So your starting assumption is that the claim is true. And your alternative hypothesis H1 in this case, now because it says that the company's been overstating, our alternative hypothesis is that mu is less than 60. And there's a bit of a giveaway in that we've been given 59.1 as a value to test, that it's going to be less than 60. Now we've been asked to use a 5% level of significance. So I'm going to write out my criteria for rejecting H0 now. Uh, and I'm going to be rejecting H0 if the probability that X bar, so my sample, um, is less than 59.1, which is the value that I've been given to test, I'm going to reject H0 if that is less than or equal to 0 0.05, so 5%. And uh, I'm now going to use um, my calculator to find the probability of this happening with this distribution here um, and uh, go from there. So I'm just going to go over here and do that. So uh, we're going to go into menu seven, normal CD, um, and it's going to ask us for the lower boundary, uh, which we're going to put in as a really, really small value. So minus a million tends to do the job. Uh, the upper value is going to be 59.1, which is what we're testing against here. Uh, the standard deviation I worked out earlier. Now we're using this standard deviation for the sample population or the sample normal distribution. Uh, and we're going to do the mean of 60. Um, and if I type all that in now. Uh, it gives me a probability of 0 0.1151. So I've calculated that, so I'm going to write that over here. So the probability that X bar is less than 59.1 is equal to 0 0.1151. So if the um, distribution follows, uh, or sorry, if the samples follow this distribution, the chance of getting a mean of less than 59.1 is just over, is just over 11 and a half percent. So comparing that with my significance level, 0 0.1151 is greater than 0 0.05. Um, so it is not very unlikely that this could have happened. Uh, so I do not have enough evidence to reject H0 here. So I, I do not reject H0. And I say that there is insufficient evidence. And it's important when I do this that I put it in the context of the question. So there's insufficient evidence to suggest. That the company is overstating the mean amount of juice per carton. There we go. So recap of key points then. We defined our population normal distribution. X follows a normal 60, 3 squared using the standard deviation shown. We then adjusted that for the sample mean by dividing the variance 3 squared by 16, which was the size of the sample we took. That gave us a new standard deviation of 3 quarters, uh, which we used in our subsequent calculations. And when the probability of this value occurring was greater than the significance level, we said that there was not enough evidence to reject H0. OK, join me in the next video where I'll be talking about critical regions. We'll see you then.